and welcome back to BVE 2016 in my studio this afternoon. I have four guests. Jeff, goodness me, should we start with you? What are we talking about this afternoon? Data storage. Tell me a little bit, Jeff, about the company that you're representing and what you want to share with us about data storage. So storage is at the very heart of the workflows that our media and broadcast customers deploy. Uh, our company, HGST, is an infrastructure provider. That means we provide a myriad of storage solutions, but a critical part of bringing those products to market are our partners who are here at the table, and we really deliver a comprehensive service and deployment from distribution all the way to training for end-to-end -end delivery of our solutions. Okay, and Jeff, for anybody watching this, um, you are on stand K30. Okay, HTST, how do we find out more information about you? Have you got a Twitter feed, Twitter handle? Uh, I'm at Media Telco Dude. So at Media Telco Dude, you can watch my I tweets. I love that. Thank you. Media Telco, Telco Dude. Dude. You are a dude. You know what a dude is, right? I know. It's a guy it's that knows a lot about media and telecom. Yes. And by the way, so do our customers. They do delivery of media, and a lot of them deliver it via the cloud. I did not imagine that a BVE expo, I would meet a dude. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Right, Keith, how are you part of this jigsaw? So um, we are the stand K30. Um, Everyone's on stand K30. Yes, we're on K30. How are these guys <coughs> making any money if you're all on one stand? <laughs> it's the place to be. Um, so we are a value-add distributor. So we integrate between uh, the manufacturer, the reseller, um, other manufacturers within the uh, ecosystem, uh, and the end user. Um, we've been doing it for 20 years. Um, Started in audio, went through into video, and now you know the world it is today is a, a significantly different place. Okay, good, Greg. Thank you, thank you, Keith. Tell me a little bit about yourself and who you're representing. You guys work, you you work with Jeff, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm Greg Crosby. I'm the product line manager for G Technology, um, and we basically build storage uh, solutions for creative communities, specifically in the video industry. And we actually get to take a lot of the technology that HGST develops from a hard drive standpoint and integrate it into our solutions. Okay, good. And finally, but not last, Simon. Always, you're part of the coal face, yes. aren't you? Well, so you're doing all the solutions and everything, and I'm the one holding the drive and then plugging it in and actually making the edits work and that sort of thing. That's right, Simon's so, our customer. So it's, it's what these guys do to make these um, so much faster. That means that we can hit deadlines, so essentially. So um, it's interesting hearing you talk about the theory behind it and the solutions and whatever, but your solutions equal me actually going to bed before 2 a.m. And so that's how it manifests itself for me. That's our goal, save you time. Yes. Okay, now for anybody watching this, okay, we stream this to 18,000 people, okay. I want to know, I know you all have different customers. Who, between the three, between the four of you, identify to our viewers who are your key customers. Who are you selling to? Media and entertainment, creative content. Media and entertainment, creative content. So, so anybody watching <coughs> this that has a media and creative content requirement? Well, there are two segments of the market and we target all of them. The first market that we target is the consumer, uh, individual consumer. That could be small post studios, it could be individual producers, and that target uh, customer is uh, focused on by G Technologies. That's what Greg and his team work on. Our segment, HCST, focuses on the very large enterprise. We focus on the very large studios, the large networks, the large uh, multinational enterprises. So it, from very small all the way up to the very multinational uh, companies and we target and have solutions and products for all of those. And how big is your company? Uh, is this an overcrowded marketplace that, that we're talking, that you're operating in? So uh, when our company invented the disk drive in 1955, there were almost, from the 60s and 70s, there were 75 
companies that were in this market. Wow. Today, there are only two manufacturers left standing. Two many, what did you do with them, Jeff? You blew them out of the we water. Either, we either bought them, or our competitor bought them, or they went out of business. Good, good, well, well. Okay, that's subjective, but effectively, you've identified what the customer wants and you are providing them with a solution that they are happy with. Excellent marketing. Right, boys, sorry, not boys, gentlemen. Thank you. Gentlemen, okay. <coughs> we are encouraging people, our viewers, to send in questions for you, okay? Oh. So we have a couple of questions here. I have one from Ryan in Milton Keynes. How can you protect your future investments and workflows? Who wants to answer that? I'll answer it, yeah. Um, Thanks, Greg. Obviously, multiple copies uh, of, of your content is obviously going to be key. Uh, we actually like to use this little rule, not that everybody follows it, but you know, to have three copies of your data at all times, yep. uh, two of those copies are geographically separated, meaning they're not on the same storage location. <coughs> And then you know we're all creating this content and, and editing and, and uh, creating this uh, work of art, for lack of better words. Uh, so you only want to work from one copy. So that's what we call our three-two-one rule, um, and that's a great strategy in terms of backing up and protecting your content. Another strategy, Jeff. Another strategy is to adopt some of the interoperable uh, media standards. There's an organization called FIMS that's developing a strategy for media companies to be able to develop workflows that can move between different software architectures throughout the workflow. Are, there, are FIMS here today? Uh, uh, the FIMS is a, a, a standards organization to which many software companies as well as hardware infrastructure manufacturers are adopting so that their workflows can be seamless across various choices and not be locked in to infrastructure players or to various software tools. That's another strategy that media companies can deploy so that they're not locked into today's technology only. A second one, in addition to what Greg said, is to be able to leverage and use object storage, which can be connected to tomorrow's technologies of higher dense software as well as hardware uh, solutions. Excellent, thank you. Another question. Okay, I think this one's for you, Keith. What impact are media clouds having on the number of copies of content? You so, happy <clears throat> to answer that one? Yeah, so I think it depends how big your content is. So some people at the show you know, are still uh, filming or they're digital photographers and they might be working you know, low data rates. For other people that are going to be working 4K, 5K, 8K, it's so huge, you can't get that into the cloud. You know, if you think when you go home, you've got broadband that's maybe 100 megabit, 150 megabit, you know, how do you get six to 10 terabytes of storage that you created today into the cloud? It's going to take you months or years uh, to get that data there. So <clears throat> I think the interesting thing is how people can, um, uh, uh, in their workflow, deal with such huge content and still work with the cloud. So what people are tending to do is keeping raw um, within their facility, but there's something called you know, transcoding, um, making kind of off-site proxies. That goes into the cloud, so then people from around the world can physically see your footage. Um, so it is very, it's very challenging because the data pipes just aren't there yet for it. Simon, any final comments before we go to our brief break? Oh, adding to that, you've got um, uh, companies like Backblaze and Dropbox who allow you to trickle feed updates. And so a lot of the editors that um, I know have um, content, du duplicated content in different areas and then switch between them so they can send each other drives but then actually edit on the same content or the same, on, same job. Okay, hold that thought, guys. We are going for a short break. We're going to be back soon. Do tweet me if you want to hear about anything specific from my panel using the hashtag KitPlus. See you in five. Welcome back to Kit Plus Live from BVE 2016. Do drop by my stand on N55 to collect your free copy for all your pro video. A little bit of a shameless plug and broadcast needs. There's some excellent news and reviews, particularly on drones. I'm obsessed with drones. 
a great way to spy on your neighbor, isn't it? Okay, back to my studio audience. Wow, I have five gentlemen, four, five. Who's five? The fifth one is our ego. <laughs> Start with you, Jeff. Just for a recap, if anybody's just tuning in now, tell us a little bit about your company, HGST. Well, all of us focus on the media and the broadcast markets. So our companies here deliver what our customers in this market need, and that's a comprehensive infrastructure to deliver workflows, and we deliver it end-to-end -to, -end to them. So together, all of us on stand K30, by the way, where we'd be- Everyone's you, on stand. You talked about shameless promotion, we do too. Have you got any hashtags, Twitter feeds? Uh, yeah, so G Technology, it's at, at G Tech right. Storage. Yep. Do you want to just introduce yourself? Who are you? Yeah, yeah, so my, I'm Greg Crosby, product line manager for G Technology. And uh, you can follow us at uh, hashtag G Technology or uh, Twitter at G Tech Storage. Dot, or G Tech Storage, yeah. Simon, explain who you are. I'm, I'm, in, I'm an Adobe trainer. I, I train um, editors and creators how to do stuff on the timeline. But it's interesting what you say about um, solutions. Solutions to me is getting a drive fast enough so that you can actually then back up and transfer information, which means that you can get it off the camera without dropping frames and then get it onto the timeline and then get it through your job. So the, the, uh, the whole workflow thing that you mentioned is um, something that I have to translate with, to people because not everyone has the same computer or the, the same camera or the same desire or the same project or the same resolution. So they all, they all have slightly different needs. So it's interesting how the different solutions reflect in the different workflows and the different drives. And before we go into solutions, Keith, who are you? Tell us a little bit about yourself and then I want to understand how you all work together, the four of you in Harvard. Okay. Who are you, Keith? So I'm from Global Distribution. Uh, we're a value-added distributor. Um, we essentially link the manufacturers through resellers to an end user. We spend a lot of time, obviously, at the show um, doing anything from acquisition all the way through to long-term archive. I've just had your brother on, haven't you I? You have. Yeah, and you're all on the same stand. Everyone's on K30. This is like one BBE. 2016 <coughs> is like one big happy family. It certainly is. And, and, and how are the four of you kind of interlinked? Well, first of all, we're all in the same booth, as you just <laughs> mentioned. So if for nothing else. Are we else, saving money? Did we say we were on K50 or K30? Where are we, K30? K30. Yeah, so that's one thing. But more importantly, if you're a broadcaster or if you're a media shop, you need to come and talk to us because we are able to deliver infrastructure, training, deployment, integration, as well as training and how to use these uh, solutions, or if I could use use cases if you're more comfortable with that. Um, we all work together as a support vehicle for those companies. And I think it's interesting from the, <clears throat> what we're trying to establish on the stand is that you know, whether you're a very knowledgeable camera person, whether it be digital photography or uh, videography, um, is that you can, you can start at the beginning and you can transition through the stand and understand other parts about other manufacturers and how that works. Because if you're a camera person, um, you might only be interested in delivering your footage to your client, and at which point you're no longer interested in what happens to that. You've done your good job, it's done. Um, but for people who want to take it a bit further, they can actually understand you know, how that fits in the workflow. And if they need to keep, if, they're your, if you're a content owner, then you want to keep that for 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, because that's where your money comes from. You know, if, you're, if you're a content owner and you can't get access to your content, then your assets are worth nothing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the, pre it's the preservation question as to how much is your footage worth? So whether you're a, an architect, whether you're a photographer, videographer, musician, makes no difference. It's, you know, what is the value of what you've just created? If you're a hobbyist, eh, it's maybe nothing. Uh, it's fun. And one of the things that I was taken by was your company's uh, logo, and that where you talk about from content capture and ingest to editorial, to storage, to, to archival, transcode, and playout, 
And that is the media workflow that your ultimate end user clients are looking to you to provide solutions for. Yeah, and it's interesting, you know, seeing how you know you would go out and sit with someone and train someone, and it's, it's their understanding of you know they have you because they want to learn the tools of the trade, but they're they're gleaming info from you of which is going to hopefully inspire them through and, and, and make sure that their projects deliver. Because as you said, it's all, about, it's all about time because time is money. And if your drive goes down or if you, you, know, if you have to start transcoding all your data, you're not going to get it done in time. Absolutely, and, and a drive, one drive isn't the same as another drive. And they've got different protocols and different speeds <coughs> and you can really get into trouble if you decide on one camera and your drive is going to match that camera or your several backup drives as well, which you need to consider. So yeah, and that's a huge non-understanding in the industry. I'm still surprised by how much people um, just assume, oh, I'll just get a drive. But then they realize, well, why isn't this yeah. bit of my workflow actually functioning? So it's, it's a, a drive a, is definitely yes, not a drive. A drive is definitely not a drive. <laughs> there you go, that's, that's your quote. I have a question for you, Greg. I'm curious about the, um, the impact of the cloud and how it's affecting um, what you're selling to your customer. Well. For, for G Technology, we're really focused, uh, you know, again, we, we cover a variety of different customer segments, as we say. You know, we cover everything from the consumer that are looking for high performance, kind of stylish looking products to go next to their Macs or their Windows based systems that, you know, back up all that content to, you know, supporting big studios uh, in the production realm where they're transferring large amounts of content. We just actually announced uh, the new G-Speed Shuttle XL, which is 64 terabytes that's actually transportable that comes along with you, what you know, on set. Has a handle. Has a handle on it, goes into a nice protective case, uh, in like a Pelican case as an example. Um, so for, for our portfolio, you know, we're really, we're really trying to optimize the workflow and, and create some efficiencies around that and save time, right? And also provide quality, reliable storage to protect all that content. And ultimately, we understand it's going to go up into a, a cloud location. Um, you know, I think the cloud that I see today is, is really about how people collaborate you know, and share content uh, across the, 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 the networks of the world. Um, I think some of the big challenges end up being that higher resolution content to get that up into the cloud is just not possible today. And I think, Keith, you kind of touched on that earlier today. I think it's even point of view of workflow, so you know, if, if someone's now shooting 4K RAW, um, you're not going to edit that off you know, a small little drive, so now you need a big system. So maybe five or 10 years ago, someone invested a lot of money in a big network solution, but that's no longer any use for the, uh, you know, for the file sizes uh, that are, people are working on today. So, so now people are working RAW locally, and then they're pushing onto their network um, the data for someone to pick up, pull down, and use. And that, you know, you can't use the cloud for that because it's not big enough, but yet you could send off a low res proxy so someone could do a quick edit and then send it back to, you know, reconform it. So it's Plus, the, the, the camera's resolutions, we don't seem to be happy with one resolution. No, why, you've got to just keep going bigger. Why have 2K when you can have 4K? <coughs> why have 4K when you can have 8K? And for HGST's business in the enterprise, the cloud has been accelerating the interest in object storage to handle these higher and higher densities. Mm -hmm. Because RAID rebuilds is, is just an inadequate solution, so therefore moving to an object storage is really the only solution for this kind of technology when you're moving to 4K, and presumably in the next five years we'll be moving to 8K. So 4K HDR has really been dramatically increasing just the true, raw capacity yeah. that has been living throughout the workflow. Gentlemen, before we close this, um, this section up, um, I just want to um, route people towards you. Um, if they're watching this and think, I have a burning question. I know that you're all on stand K30. <laughs> yeah? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we are. Great it's a big party over there. Big party. <laughs> and you'll be staying later at the bar for the networking event. Opposite the bar, so that's kind of useful for K30 us. K30 is opposite the bar. And, yeah. Keith, and Keith will be hosting <laughs> the bar. Everything. Yeah, <laughs> I do some great, great bar tricks. You guys are living the dream, the BVE dream. <laughs> okay, you. is there anything that, what, what particularly, one final question, what are you particularly excited about within this industry that is available right here now? I, I think it's you. the speed of innovation. It's <laughs> this little plug. This, Simon's this little excited. Can we get I'm a close up on <laughs> Simon's plug? This plug, this Thunderbolt plug, um, now means that I can plug it into my um, 
my Dell, and you used to not be able to do this. And so that means that with the speed of this SSD drive, you can do stuff that you couldn't do um, just months ago. Love that. So easy to please. There we go. Greg, what are you what are you excited about? You know, I, I I'm excited about uh, some of the challenges that relates to workflow. I mean, that's kind of my that's that's what I you know. For example. Want to do? Uh, I mean, just you know. Capturing all this content, high resolution content, you know, you got 4K, 6K, soon to be 8K, huge amounts of data that needs to be captured and transferred and, and uh, made available for people to work on. Um, I'm also excited about a lot of the, the software and the tools that are now becoming available up in the cloud as well as uh, local kinds of infrastructure for people to collaborate um, on. Keith, 30 seconds, what are you excited about? <coughs> uh, innovation. Yeah. And um, the, the big industry figures, whether you be software or editing, are all now working together. So whereas they used to all be very separate and they used to hate each other, now everybody <laughs> is just working One together. One happy family on K30, Jeff. Mobility. I'm excited that entertainment, news, information, your kids' pictures, all of that is coming to a tablet or to your pocket cell phone and that is enabled by the technology innovation that all of us are so involved with and that's pretty cool. And I'm excited that you guys know LA, a place that is close to my heart, Santa Monica. <laughs> Thank you all for being part of Fabulous Kit Plus. Now, if anybody watching this has any questions for my esteemed panel, do tweet us at Kit Plus and follow at TV Bay. Okay, well done. Another BVE 2016 live show in the bag. I'll be back at 3.30 with Adder Technology.